Then there's this whole world of biotechnology. Our genetic understanding is already leading to big strides in human health. The mRNA breakthrough that just came through in the pandemic is just a taste of things to come. I think we're finally ready to see biotechnology's full impact. Arguably, biotech is where infotech was in the 1990s. Now, the fundamental drivers of information technologies that drove the last long boom have to do with exponential drops in costs, allowing exponential rise in scale. It turns out that the cost curve in genome sequencing is beating Moore's law at this point. In 2000, it cost $2 billion to crack one human genome. By 2010, that cost had dropped to $2 million per one human genome. Today, it's less than 1000 bucks. There's some limit, but ultimately, you can imagine over the course of the next decade, it's going to be super cheap, if not close to free. So I think we're underestimating how we could reinvent healthcare. Now, we're still in the very early days of CRISPR techniques, but we're on the road to widespread genetic engineering. And we are already moving beyond human health problems into synthetic biology. Now, this is not just genetic engineering, but wider biological engineering. We now are understanding how cells work as well as how the genome works, and we're able to apply that now, not basically to all living things. So, for example, we're already seeing how it's impacting food and ultimately starting to grip into cell-based meat. We could be seeing close to 40 to 50 percent of the meat we eat could actually be uh, cell-based meat uh, over the course of this period we're talking about here. And we could see truly sustainable materials to replace, let's say, the scourge of plastics that's mounting all over. All these things in the biotech field could help our ongoing challenge of dealing with climate change. I think we could see a complete inversion of how we produce things, a fundamental shift to actually grow things with very little waste from the bottom up.